I bring to you this morning grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one that the wise men sought as they followed the star. Amen. Please be seated. I'm Adam Peck. I'm one of the pastors here at Holy Cross. I'm delighted to see you all here this morning. And I have a question for you as we get started. How many of you still have your Christmas trees up at your house? All right. We got a few. All right. Um, See, I asked because uh, outside on my drive uh, here this week, um, I saw this. Um, and in fact, right when we came home from uh, New Year's, it was New Year's Day, and we were tra- New, Year- New Year's Day when we were traveling. There was one. There was enough snow next to my neighbor's driveway that he had just planted it out there. It seemed like another tree in his yard, still green and things. I tried to get a picture of that one, but I went literally when I went out to go take the picture, the garbage truck came around the corner and scooped it up and dumped it in there. So I had to go chase this one down. In any case. Maybe you even uh, looked at the the church in here and said, Pastor, you still got your trees up. Don't you know Christmas is done? I mean, even if you're doing 12 days of Christmas, that ended on Friday. It's not a mistake. There's more after the Christmas season. And we do 12 days of Christmas. That gets us up till Friday. But then it's the coming of the wise men, what I talked about with the kids a minute ago. And it's part of Christmas, but on the tail end of it, because even though we have, as I mentioned there, a nativity scene where you've got the wise men right next to the shepherd, right next to baby Jesus and Mary and Joseph and a couple sheep and things in there, they didn't come until two years later. They started their journey when the star appeared, which would be when the king, baby Jesus, was born. But it took them two years to come from where they were traveling to arrive there. And I, and I wanted to take, take the time to stop and pause before all the Christmas decorations are put away. They'll be gone next week here as well. To walk with the wise men for a little while and to, to experience with them and, and to look through the, the eyes of Scripture how the world met those wise men and the star that was there. And, and I have to give uh, thanks and credit where it's due. Uh, um, there's a, a pastor, uh, Robert Bugby, uh, who I was just inspired by. And I want to share some of these things with you as well today um, before your Christmas decorations are gone and we move on into this new year. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 2 today. So if you want to get out your Bible and read along there, uh, feel free. Otherwise, it'll be up on the screens as well. So Matthew 2, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, in the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Now, first of all, who are we talking about? We got time and place and all that. We understand Bethlehem, Judea, King Herod, he was the one ruling over in that area. But then magi from the east. Sometimes uh, we sing the song, we three kings of Orient are, and we think of them as three kings. Um, Same people we're talking about here. Sometimes thought of as kings because of how extravagant of gifts they brought. Gold and frankincense and myrrh, I mean, way over the top. Gifts that were only uh, due to a king and could only be afforded to give from another one who was very wealthy, so they're thought of as kings. But actually that word magi is a little closer to an English word that um, probably more accurately describes who these people were. And magi kind of sounds like magician. Uh, Someone who is into a little bit of the dark arts kind of stuff. People that would have been watching the stars. Uh, Not necessarily Jesus' followers, but yet they ask that question. Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? A star appearing out there, there was an understanding at that time that a star could come when a king was born. But how did they know king of the Jews? Our best guess is that the people of God who got um, taken over by other powers uh, that be during uh, earlier times had gotten taken from their homeland and moved to far away lands. And in those places, inadvertently, uh, they share their faith. They find out about these things. And so it's possible that the prophecies that the Jews, the people of God, were uh, looking forward to or were following from, they would have shared that in the places where they 
had been taken to so these people could have found out about this. Our best guess is that somewhere in the neighborhood of like India is where these magi would have come from and hence the two year journey. It took a long time on camels uh, at that time. And, and were there three of them? Well we knew there was three gifts so there had to have been at least three but uh, likely it was a whole caravan of people to have traveled for that long to get to that place. Magi, where is the one who's been born king of the Jew? We saw his star. And different than GPS, it didn't pinpoint locate them. They got to uh, the main area in Jerusalem there. And uh, when they did, and uh, they found it, it was a beautiful thing because uh, they, they heard, uh, after they heard the king, they were looking for directions about how to get there. They went on their way, and, and the star that they had seen before, now they're seeing again. And it went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. We really don't understand how this star works, but we know that it led them somehow. And on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him like a king, the king of all of us, and the king to them. And they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, incense, and myrrh, or gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Two-year journey, long ways away, stuff they don't really know about, invested a a ton of time and energy in to do that. I mean, diligence is uh, when they saw the star is what they went after. The very thing that Pastor Jim invited uh, you to pray for for us in the call committee, diligence in the task before them. They went after it. And it's amazing how you put that up against the other responses to the star. We continue on. We're back at the Matthew 2, now at verse 3. Uh, when King Herod heard about this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. Magi, super excited, two-year journey, major investment, tons of diligence to try to get there. King Herod, disturbed, troubled, greatly troubled in one translation. In Jerusalem with him? Why were they troubled? (laughs) Because they knew Herod, or at least Herod's family. They were known as as bloodthirsty and ruthless kinds of people. Those who uh, historically are told to, uh, at one point, having um, punished some people for uh, crossing them in some way, overheard other people uh, kind of saying, man, that was a little harsh, you know, and then they got killed too for their little commentary about what happened before. If King Herod ain't happy, the people ain't happy. So they're all troubled along with him. And so he, concerned about things, though a ruthless man, also a smart guy, said, okay, king of the Jews, I'm going to go to the Jewish people that are around. And, And so he does. He called together all the people's chief priests, so the Jewish people, the people of Judah, the people of God, all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, and he asked them where Christ was to be born. See, the the star kind of only led them general area, so the Magi probably went to the capital city, went to the place where the people with the most information were, and they asked about these things, and now that main person is asking the experts in the area. And they said, in Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet had written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. They got their answer. So Herod calls the Magi secretly and found out the exact time that the star had appeared. This is where we get that two years thing. Later on you'll find uh, how they had done the math and things, but trust me on this for now. Uh, It was about two years previously that the Magi reported to Herod that the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for this child. And as soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. Right. (laughs) He was going to go and get rid of him. He was troubled because there was another king in town. He was troubled because there was another authority that he was worried about having in place. And he was all about putting down anybody else who was going to cross him and definitely was concerned about a king in that area. So he says, you go do this work for me and I want to come worship him. Right. 
And after they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star that they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. We read this before. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Diligence, long journey, lots of investment led to joy. That's one response. The other one, Herod, troubled, greatly distressed, concerned about another authority in the area, but there's still a third group who's been conspicuously silent about all of this. Now, I'm not much for an argument from silence. I don't think it's the strongest argument out there. But nonetheless, don't you find it interesting that the chief priests, the teachers of the law, the ones who looked up this prophecy, who have these guys that traveled two years' worth of travel away and all that investment to come to here and told you about this star that they saw that came two years before, and here's the prophecy that goes along with it, and they just hand them all the information and say, sure, go check it out. They didn't gather their gifts. They didn't get their choirs together. They didn't put together the caravan and go along with them. I mean, comparatively, had a small area to to travel as compared to the two-year travel from India all the way over to the Mediterranean where they were. They don't even send the intern or something like that as a bunk job for him to go along and figure out whether or not it might work. And on top of that, even after they, they go to the house and they present the gifts to them, See, having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they return to their country by another route. They never circle back to Herod like he had told them. So then the people back where Herod's advisors and all that, the chief priests and teachers of the law, would have never found out from them, even the lazy man's way. It didn't come back. Did any of these do a question mark for them? No, they ignored it. Unconcerned about it. Apparently they had enough already. Is this not the one that they were looking for? So where does that put us today? What's the value in this for us at this time of year? These things point us to Jesus. The tree that's up in our houses point us to Jesus. They're signs in the same way as the star was. And there will continue to be things that point us to Jesus in the year ahead, even after the decorations are put away. Maybe it's the, hey, I had a friend invite me to church, and if that's you, we're great to, happy to see you again. And if you invited someone, continue to do that, because this is God working through you. This is God calling and saying, come and see. Maybe it's other ways that did you see Jesus at work. It may be in the communion that we receive today, the body and blood of Jesus Christ given to us for the forgiveness of sins, more than just a sign, it is Him delivered, His body and blood, His forgiveness for us. Maybe you see Jesus in the, in the unforeseen blessings, in the, the health report that you did receive, in the expectations that you did have, that now have been blown out of the water, and suddenly things look good and clear and better, and you're thankful for the life and the year that you have now because it wasn't the year that you were expecting. Maybe it's you see Jesus at work and a point of his sign is you see a a friend that you know that life is tough in their relationships or somebody else you know is tough because of of finances or a lost job, but yet you see in them peace because of their faith in Jesus Christ. There are all kinds of signs yet to be seen. Or maybe it's even more clear than that. Maybe it's the word of a pastor or a song on the radio that you hear that tells you God's word. Maybe something from a devotion that you've read or a friend that's come alongside and said, hey, bud, let me tell you this. There will continue to be signs, and my question to you is how will you respond? Will it be like Herod, one who didn't want another authority in his life. I think that might come up in, uh, in our lives as we uh, deal with uh, the directions of the things that we, we know that we shouldn't do, but yet uh, we find ourselves in them yet again. Like holding on to hurts. Even though Jesus Christ has forgiven us, We hang on to that not forgiving as if it's going to benefit us somehow. Or or maybe it's uh, something else like, like seeking respite in our lives in things like unhealthy patterns on the internet or in the secrecy that we can find in our smartphones or in the careless diet or exercise choices or 
the less than careful use of alcohol. And we know that we should be looking for our peace and our respite and our hope in the world and God's promises and His presence in our lives. Or maybe you find yourself ignoring the things like the chief priests and the teachers of the law, who though you know that coming to church more often and taking time to be in a Bible study or joining that life group that you've really wanted to do but just haven't made space for yet, or taking time to pray more often or lead your family in doing that, you know that they're good but you say, but you don't end up doing it. It's easy to point the fingers at the chief priest and say, guys, where are you at? Why didn't you do something? This was so easy. It was so close. It was so accessible. You were told about it. It was right there. We could point at them and say, that doesn't make sense to me. But that finger should come right back here. Do you have enough Jesus already? Is there enough input into your life in terms of his word that you just don't need a little bit more? How will you respond? Let me promise you this. As you're putting those decorations away, as the tree goes to the curb, perhaps, God's signs, His pointing out to you how He's at work in your life will continue to come. And if you, with diligence, follow those things, let Him lead you where it goes, you will find exceedingly great joy like the Magi did. And in fact, it's better than that. When you do, it will show on your face and in your life, and you will be a light that shines into the world that points other people to Jesus as well. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we pray that you would guide us, that you would help us to see how you are leading us to yourself. Lord, give us courage to do the things that uh, we know that we should do, that, that we would fight back on the, your authority in our lives. Lord, give us the the wisdom to see where we need more of you and to not turn away from that, but to follow so that we might have that joy that only you can give in this life and looking forward to life that is to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.